everybody this is Jennifer welcome to my channel today I'm doing a Friday reads video I hope everybody is having a good week and has excellent plans for the weekend um, I have finished a few books and I am reading some others so let's go ahead and start so randomly last week I decided that I was going to review like audit in a weird way my coffee intake and because I've gotten into the habit of drinking coffee like all day long and I'm not really bothered by a caffeine perspective however I do put a decent amount of sugar in my coffee so I I decided that I was gonna look at that and so basically I was putting like in the morning, I would have three cups of coffee and in between the three cups of coffee, for a total, I'd end up with about four tablespoons of sugar. And I'm phrasing it that way because the first few times I told people, it came off like I was having four tablespoons of sugar per cup of coffee and that is not, that is not it. So I have been able for the past few days to get my sugar and my coffee intake down to like, one and like just under two tablespoons so I've cut it more than half and I'm hoping that will be good for my health it should be having less sugar is always better but yeah that is a non-bookish thing for this week um the rest of this stuff is all book related and um I wanted to talk not just about what I've been reading, but what I'm planning to read in March, because March has um, March of the Mammoths, and I have a mammoth to read. So the first thing I finished last week was Artificial Condition by Martha Wells. Um, that is the second book in the Murderbot Diaries. And so this book is really good and it's really funny, and it was a reread and I gave it four stars. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy this series and I'm rereading the books on the way to reading, um, hmm, oh, Network Effect, which is the one that came out last year. And then this year there will be a new one called Fugitive Telemetry, which I am really looking forward to reading. So, yep, that is a part of my reread project and it is, it was very good reread. Uh, the last thing I finished was Cleopatra A Life by Stacey Schiff and I ended up giving this five stars and since I had borrowed this from the library I actually actually purchased my own copy. Um, I'm not purchasing new physical books this year except under very select circumstances and since I had already read this and loved it and I know I'm going to want to reread it, I went ahead and purchased a copy which I have not actually received yet. So that will be coming. Um, yeah, at the end of this, I was like, well, for one, I was kind of astonished that, you know, Cleopatra died in 30 BC, which is like, at this point, it's over 2,050 years away uh, you know in the past and I just I was astonished how much I was able to connect with her as a not necessarily as a character in the book because this is nonfiction, but yeah I was like at nearing the end I didn't want to keep reading because I knew at the end she was gonna like die and I was like anyway <laughs> I felt that that was like, that was really good. I really liked it. I liked her writing a lot. Um, it's rather unfortunate that you don't have a whole lot of firsthand sources about Cleopatra, except through these men who did not like her and feared her because she was a powerful woman and they could not handle that. Um, but I think I think Stacy Schiff manages to flesh out her as a person, um, but you know, considering the lack of sources, um, you end up learning a lot about tangential things like Cicero, who's a bit of a doofus, and then King Herod, 
which I wasn't expecting to learn a lot about. Dude had a messed up family. Anyway, so yeah, that was really good reading experience. And at some point I will be rereading. Um, let's see here. Those are the things I finished. Um, what am I currently reading? Um, the first book, book number one for my book tube spin, um, The Lesser Bohemians by Emer McBride. The way it's written is a kind of stream of consciousness writing. Um, the, the main character is an 18 year old Irish girl who comes to London to learn um, theater and she becomes involved with an actor who's 20 years older than she is and has a pretty sketchy history. Um, and it's all very dramatic. Um, it took me a while, one, to become used to the writing style and two, to actually get into the story. But now I'm like, like I said, I'm about a third of the way in and I'm really like invested in what's going on. And I am coming to like, this happens in 95 or like in the mid nineties, I think. I th no, I think it's like 94, 95. So I'm thinking a lot of like how I was in 94, 95. This book just makes me want to listen to Tori Amos and that's, well, it makes me want to keep reading it and it makes me want to listen to Tori Amos, which I've been doing. Um, driving my sister crazy, I think. But yeah, so far so good with this one. I hope I end up liking it. Well, well I hope I keep liking it. So three books that I've been reading, but I've decided to put aside until April, which why I'm doing that will become clear later, but I've got, uh, okay, so I'm about 65% done with The Art of the Commonplace, um, which is Agrarian Essays by Wendell Berry. And I'm pretty like happy to be putting that aside for right now. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that it's a fairly large essay collection about one topic by one person. So it's good to like, I, I feel like it's better to give it space um, because they were kind of starting to run together. So I'm glad about that. Um, the Iliad um, is also gonna be on hold for just a little. Um, I might try to get to that one sooner than the other one. And then this one, The Belly of Paris by Emile Zola, which I would very much like to get back to as soon as I can. The other two, I'm about 20 to 30% done with each of them. So I haven't got in as far, but I'll def, these are not DNFs. I will definitely be going back. Just probably not until April. So what is on deck? for the coming weeks. Um, so March is March of the Mammoths. It's where you pick a tome that is over 800 pages and you read it um, in the month of March. You don't have to finish it in the month, month of March, but it's kind of like, I, I consider it a challenge to finish the book in the month of March. And besides, I kind of want to get back to those books in April, so I'd like to finish this in March. But my pick is The Shorter Peeps, which is a, a which is an abridged version of Samuel Pepys' diary, and it's the penguin version that is, does it say? Selected and edited by Robert Latham. So yes, that is my mammoth for the month of March. Um, before the index, let's see. And okay, it's got over a thousand pages. Like the postscript ends on page 1024. So I'm not really going to count like the maps and the indices and stuff like that. And I'm also not counting like the intros. So yeah, there's quite a lot going on here and the font is fairly small as well. So that is my March of the Mammoth, Mammoth pick. 
Um, the next thing is my second booktube spin book, which I'm going to start after The Lesser Bohemians. And that is A Month in Siena by Hisham Matar. Um, it's where he goes to Siena for a month to paint, I'm pretty sure. And after that, it's going to be Bloody Rose by Nicholas Eames. Um, that is a book, it's a follow-up to Kings of the Wild, um, which is a fantasy and it's fairly humorous and it also mixes in a whole lot of musical references. Um, Kings of the Wild was focused on the 70s and then Bloody Rose, one, it has a female protagonist and two, it's focused on 80s, on the 80s, which is like, I was born in 1980, so 80s and early to mid 90s are my jam, so I am very excited about getting to that. Now, why am I reading those two? Um, I did not, I have not mentioned this before, but I am participating in the If You've Got It, Read It Challenge that is um, hosted and created by the Spinebreakers, Megan Sue. And I don't have a TBR because I'm not doing TBRs this year, not really. However, I have this nice little box with If You've Got It, Read It 2021 on it. And inside, I have put these nice little penguin post-its with the prompts on there. So my first one I did for this was um, the prompt to read a borrowed book, and that is Cleopatra, A Life, which I gave five stars. So that was the first prompt, which oh, is yeah. a link to the announcement video on that one. Um, but Instead of doing a TBR, I took these little post-it notes and I wrote a prompt for each one on each of the little penguins. So when I am done, I will be reading, I'll just pick the next prompt and then I'll just choose a book from the books that I have. Yes, I finished, I started with the borrowed one, which I got from the library and that was Cleopatra Life, five stars. And then after that, I picked up nonfiction and since my um, booktube spin is nonfiction, and frankly, and also my March of the Mammoth is nonfiction, so I'm fixed up doubly for the nonfiction. I went ahead and picked up one more prompt, and that was my five star prediction. Now I've never actually done a five star prediction video, but um, I have a list of five star predictions on my Kindle, and um, Bloody Rose was on there. Um, I actually think I'm gonna, I gave Kings of the Wild four stars, but I think I'm gonna actually like Bloody Rose better. That's why it's on my five star list and I've been wanting to read it ever since I got it and that's like months ago. Alrighty, so that is my Friday reads. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you've got anything fun read, uh, reading wise or otherwise planned for this weekend and if you have any comments about the books I mentioned on this video. Uh, again, thank you for watching and have a nice weekend. Bye.